All right, so moving on with a few more things that we want to talk about here. Uh, we've got, uh, we've done a little bit about posts and a little bit about pages. Um, perhaps our pages and posts look a little boring because we haven't added any graphics yet. So let's talk about working with graphics in um, WordPress. So on the left side, on the left menu, make sure you're under the dashboard, the back end. In the back end, on the left side, you've got media. Click on library. The library is where you store all of your media, your pictures, and, and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll get a little practice with uploading a picture and such, and then using it on a page. And then I'll, I'll show you a really cool online uh, graphical editing tool that is free. But for the moment, let's go to Media Library. And here in WordPress, we have a limit of 3 gigabytes of space, so that's a lot of pictures. And I don't have any pictures yet here, so to add a picture, pretty easy. Uh, at the top, we've got Add New. So make sure you're in the Media Library, and then you can click Add New. We've got some uh, sample pictures that you can borrow. I'll show those to you in a moment. Notice what's cool is when you select Add New, now what you can do is drag a picture onto it if you see the picture, or we'll upload. So here's how to upload. Um, click Select Files. What kind of thing would teach us how to put a bunch of pictures together so it's all Was that Photoshop that we enjoyed? That would be a Photoshop class, yeah. Okay. So on your open screen here, um, you'll have to tell me if you have this or not. Hopefully you do. Um, on your open screen here, on the left side, you've got pictures. Click pictures. Let's see what's there. Do you have sample pictures? You guys have a sample pictures? You open that up and you got a bunch of pictures. You can upload more than one if you Let's say I want to upload the koala and the penguins. You can click koala and then hold control on the keyboard and click penguins and it'll select them both. So inside of those sample pictures, you can open as many as you want. I'm going to I'm going to get two at the moment. I'm going to get three, the, the animals. The koala and then control click jellyfish and control click the penguins. So a single click selects one item, and then holding control lets you select more than one item. Can, and you, on, can you upload a folder? Wait. Wait. A whole folder? I, you cannot, like, let's say I wanted to upload this whole samples. If I just select that one, it's going to open it. See how there's no, like, upload folder? The closest thing is that if you open the folder and then you right-click select all, there's no select all, you can press control A on the keyboard, and that'll select them all. So when the, when the folder is open and you click Control A, it'll select the whole folder and upload everything. But there's no, like, upload the whole folder. I, I was asking you because in, in order to uh, organize the photos inside the, the WordPress. The media? Yeah. You know what? Um, that's a good point. There is no folder organization in WordPress. You're not going to make folders for this project or that project, it all goes into the library, but we'll see how that works. It might sound chaotic, but actually there is organization based on days. So we'll, we'll see how this looks, but I'm going to select those three items and then click open. So down at the bottom here, it's going to show me it's uploading them. Notice what it's telling me. I can upload JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, PDFs, Word Docs, PowerPoints, etc. MP3, yes, if you pay. Videos, yes, if you pay. So most graphic files and even some Office files you can upload. And then if you want videos or MP3s, you have to pay. But later on I'll talk about instead of paying, you can use other services like put your video on YouTube, and that'll work on WordPress. Put your MP3 on SoundCloud, and that'll work in WordPress. But we'll get to that. 
Um, if these finished uploading, what you want to do now is click on your library here again, just to reset the screen. I noticed that it doesn't automatically kind of tell you, like, okay, you've uploaded it. So click library to go back to the library. Thank you. Go back to library. And at the top it tells me I'm currently using two megabytes out of three gigabytes. How many megabytes are in a gigabyte? 1,024 ish. Yes. So a lot of pictures. A lot of pictures that you can upload. I'm using 0%. Now I can change my view here. Uh, notice here this like little four square thing. I can see thumbnails of them like that. That's nice. Or I can click on the list over here and see them with a little bit more info, like the name of the file, other options, what page did I upload it or attach it to. I can see also, well, show me here things that are images. What's that? Can you put a name in each picture or something like that? We can. We'll, we'll edit the picture in just a moment. Oh. So we can definitely organize a little bit more. Uh, we can view by dates. So this, by default, what it's going to do is every day that you upload something, it'll organize it into a day and a month and so forth. But there's no way for you to organize it into folders. So that's kind of weird if you're used to organization everywhere else. Like on my USB, I've got 10 folders and I put stuff in them. Uh, here in WordPress, everything exists in the library, and it's organizable by dates and so forth, and it's also searchable. So if you don't know where the folder is at, if you've got 40 folders, but you know it's called Penguin, even if you just start typing a little bit of it, Pengi, it'll then, you press enter, if you spell it right, of course, um, it'll then pop up to show you anything with that name. So in a sense, then, you don't perhaps need folder organization if you can kind of know how to retrieve the file. I would, my personally, I would like some folder organization too, but after using WordPress this long, I don't really miss it. I just know everything's in there. I can do some searching by dates or by names, and I can find it. let's say I've got these files uploaded here. Switch over just to this list view so that we're all looking at the same thing. And right now this is the name that it, that it had, penguin, koala, jellyfish. If you want to change any of that or other settings, hover over a picture and you have edit. So on your picture there, try to edit. Notice you get some options that appear. First of all, the address on the right side, file URL. That's the address to that file on your website. That's pretty useful because then you can share that address, that URL, anywhere, and people will be able to get to that picture. They'll be able to see it. On the left side, you've got some things you can also edit, like a caption and alt text. The caption is text that appears below your picture. So if I use that picture and I put it on my About screen, whatever I write under the caption will appear below the picture. It will be attached to it. That's pretty useful. So I'm going to say here on this penguin, I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, penguin party. So the caption text appears below your picture. Alternative text is a very useful thing to fill out. As we'll touch on throughout the semester, and if you take CIS 162, which is our uh, usability accessibility class, in that class uh, they, they talk about best practices for web design. Um, so alternative text is, is to be able to access 
for your picture to be accessible by everyone. By that I mean, if you if you never knew this, if you never never thought about this, people that are completely blind can still use the web. You think, well, how can someone that can't see? How do they know where to click or where to move their mouse? They can't see it. Well, people that are blind have a computer that reads to them what's on the screen. So if I were blind and I had a screen reader computer, it would read to me link dashboard, link store, link posts. It would read to me tighten your on tighten your account's security, blah blah blah, link more. It would read to me what's on screen. And even though Google is really, really, really smart, it still can't quite tell what a picture is. Like it might be able to tell those are penguins, perhaps. But it would have no way to know really, you know, perhaps the kind of penguin or that this is shot in a particular place. Think about like this. What if you have a family photo? You know, Google might be able to tell. This is a picture of people, but it's not going to know that it's your aunt or your brother or your cousin. There's no way for it to know that. So alt text is important because this is a basic, simple description of what the picture is. So that when someone is blind, they come to my site, and my product has an alt text, the computer will read to them, you know, the name of whatever you write there. And that's how then a person that is blind can manage your site, because the computer will read to them, and they'll know what to press on their keyboard. So it is a little bit of an extra step, but it is highly, highly recommended to always add alt text, alternative text, to your graphics. And if you don't know what to write, think about how would you describe this picture in one sentence to someone on the phone? You know, someone that you know, they might not be blind, but if you try to describe to them uh, over the phone, they, they can't see it. How would you describe it? I would say here, a group of penguins. Or if this were your product, you know, the name of your product. Or if this were your painting, this is my this is my surrealist style painting of of uh, Southwestern College or whatever. So you do want to add something in the alt text right there to uh, be able to have your picture accessible by the most people, visual and non-visual users. We've got description, which this one is optional. You don't have to write anything here. This is just a note for you for your picture in your own library. It doesn't really show up on, uh, on the front end. So I made a couple of changes. I'm going to click Update. That's going to save it. And then you have some very basic edits here. I'll, I'll show you better ways to edit a little later. But uh, under your picture, you've also got edit image. You've got some basic edits like, is it rotated wrong? You can rotate it here. So if you uploaded your picture and it's sideways, you can rotate it. Is it flipped wrong? You can do that there. Did you make a mistake? Undo it. The original size is this. You can change it. You can crop it. See, look at this. If you drag a little box, if you drag a little box on top of your picture, like that, then it activates right here, crop. You crop it and then it'll cut your picture. So very, very basic edits. Obviously something like Photoshop is much better. And I'll show you another tool in a moment that is like Photoshop, but free. Free, how, how free for you, real. How did you activate the crop? Well, first you have to draw your box on your picture. It doesn't look like you can, but draw on the picture, and then you've got crop. I didn't make any changes, so I'll just cancel. So I want to use this picture. I want to make an about page, and then I want to add this picture. So you can either make a page or a post and then add a picture, or you can do what we did, which is add a picture and then attach it to your page or post. So let's, um, 
uh, hover over pages and we'll add a new page. So pages add new. Up on the address here, let's write about me. You can type about me and then press tab. Tab will just jump you from wherever you were writing in this box down to the editing field. And then it creates your permalink, your address. So I want to add a picture here. We've got add media. And it says, OK, upload your picture. No, we don't want to upload a picture. We want to go to our media library. Anyone you'd like. So notice, because I was working on the penguin, it did fill in a little bit of the details here, the caption, the alt text. The other ones don't have it, but I can actually add it at this moment. Anyway, I'm just going to select the penguin and then insert into page on the bottom right. There we go. It added the picture. It resized it for me. And it also added the caption. Let's say actually I wanted to do something a little bit different. I want to take that back. I want to undo it. Um, we have the keyboard shortcuts, but we've also got the button to undo right here. Remember, we've got this toolbar toggle. If you turn on toolbar toggle, you have undo. So you've got an undo button right there. I'm going to undo that, and instead I'll show you. We're going to add a picture, but instead we're going to add a gallery because we've got maybe two or three pictures we can add, and I want them to show up in a nice, cool gallery. So I'm going to undo that, adding that picture. If you don't see this undo button, you want to turn on toolbar toggle. I'm going to go back to add media on the left side up here. Create gallery. So what Create Gallery does is it lets you select more than one picture. So I went to Insert Media again, and this time went to Create Gallery. And now if I select two or three pictures at once, it'll create a nice gallery for me. So if you click each one of these pictures and then click Create New Gallery, and then on the right side it asks, what size? Do you want them in a random order? Uh, what kind of thumbnails? You can edit this, of course, later, but I'm just going to select, I don't know, maybe circles. You may like to rearrange them, but drag them where? No, on that we can't quite do it yet because we have not divided up the screen yet, so it doesn't know exactly where to drag it to. 
but um, we can rearrange it here and I'm gonna select insert gallery and then to actually see what it looks like on your page before we publish you can preview and then that'll show it on your screen. So I chose the round ones and it looks right there, round. And then I click on one and it shows it to me large. Look at that, like a nice big gallery and everything with left and right buttons and everything. So let's say I, I don't like the design of those circles. I haven't published it yet. I could still change it. Well, I could still change it after I publish, but let's say I, I go back to the dashboard here, and if you click on the gallery, any one of those gallery pictures, you have a little X to delete the gallery, or a little pencil to edit the gallery. See that? Click on any of those pictures. The whole thing is one gallery. Then click on the pencil. I can make a change and then update gallery and then preview and on that one it automatically this slideshow one automatically goes from picture to picture creating something like this in the old days was pretty complicated So let's say I like how this about me looks. You want to publish. Yeah, in the top right you'll see publish, or if, if it's not published, it'll probably be update. Now here we looked at adding a picture, but media doesn't just mean pictures, it could be also videos. I'll show you that briefly. Um, I'm going to click down over here and press enter just to separate it. I clicked on the right side and pressed enter just to give me a new line here. And I'll go to add media again. And you saw that the default is insert media, which is one picture, create gallery, which is a bunch of pictures. And what else do we have here? Insert tweet, insert YouTube, insert from URL. So I guess here, search YouTube. Hmm. I'm going to say, let's see what happens if I type penguin. So this is searching YouTube right now for videos with that word, or we can search for playlists. You can search just about anything. You can insert one of my cool videos if you search for my name on YouTube right there. Penguins of Madagascar. They are sponsoring the class. So 
notice we cannot upload uh, a video directly. The step is that first the video should be uploaded like to YouTube and then when it's on YouTube you can link the two. Now if you do pay for the upgrade, I, I don't know how much it is but I wouldn't recommend it, then you'll be able to upload your video directly to your site. But I don't recommend it. I recommend you use YouTube because YouTube can afford to have millions and millions and millions of videos. Let them deal with the storage costs and all of that. That might not be me. I, I think that's my friend, actually. You can insert a tweet. Insert URL is if you know the address of a graphic, you can put the link there and it'll put the picture on your page from that link. There's no mention here about sound, and again, that's a little bit more a little bit more setup to do. Most of the time we'll be dealing with pictures. And then video, it's a little couple of things we can do, and then sound, it's a little more complicated. Yes? Do you think that having YouTube videos on your website helps SEO? And so why? They would help you the most if they are your own videos, because then you are creating content that the search engines like. Your own website, your own tweets, your own videos, all of that helps you more because Google and Bing and the search engines will see, okay, you're creating relevant content, we will rank you a little higher. But what if it's relevant, but I didn't make it myself, but extremely relevant? For example, it's, it's, like. it's not going to be as, as helpful to you. It's not going to hurt you, really, but it's not going to be as helpful to you unless it was your own original content. So I found a YouTube video. I'm going to insert it. And basically it put the address here. So nothing really special happened. All you the trick is all you need is the YouTube video address. It's just that in the WordPress screen here it's set up for you to help you search the video. But if you know your video address, you can just put it in and it'll automatically show as a video when you preview or publish. See that? There's the video. All right, so uh, inserting your own pictures is not that complicated, and then the others a little more, but not so bad. Uh, any questions so far? By well, I did. I did go here, add media, and I did search YouTube. And when I inserted the video, what it did was it just put the URL for me. So I did find it first by insert YouTube. Am I going to what? It does it for me. You know, I just put in the link. And I go here, and it automatically added the preview for me. All right, so how many of you have ever had any experience with Photoshop? Raise your hand, a few people. OK. How many of you have uh, Photoshop on your, on your home computer? Okay, and of those of you that raise your hand, how many of you got it legitimately? Okay. <laughs> Let me show you here then um, a place where you can uh, use a free Photoshop-like software um, on any computer. Because obviously if you install Photoshop on your home computer and you don't have it on your friend's computer, you can't use Photoshop. But here's what you can do. I'm going to open a new tab. Let's go to this website over here. 
pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com, Pixlr. Be careful, there is no E there. It's P-I-X-L-R, pixlr.com. It's written in the hip web 2.0 way of, of forgetting a vowel or two. Yeah, I'll show you. It's like a basic online free Photoshop. So if you go to pixlr.com, there's three things that we've got here. Um, on the left side is Pixlr Editor, which is like a mini Photoshop on the web, available 24 hours a day. And the middle is Pixlr Express, where if you just want to crop a picture quickly or fix the shadows quickly, Pixlr Express. And then on the right side is Pix Pixlr Omatic, which just gives you cool filters and effects and you know fun stuff. Really dress up your selfies. So here I'm going to try out the Pixlr Editor on the left. Launch web app. Create a new image. Open an image from my computer. Open it from an address. I'll just do create new image for the moment. What size? That's fine. Here we go. If you use Photoshop, this might look very familiar. There's tools on the left side like brushes, blur, red eye reduction, text, tool, select. We have layers also like Photoshop. That's one of the best things about Photoshop, to be able to um, put artwork together. Layers. We've got an undo with multiple history. We've got a brush so we can, you know, draw something. Which which one did you the one on the left? The uh, large web app. Mm -hmm. And then I created a new file, the first option, and then just the click OK. Image, right? mm -hmm. So I've got this um, this editor, and you'll have to live with the ad on the side, but just ignore it. Um, what you could also do is change your web browser size and then move it to the side, maybe. But anyway, it's you know a free web editor. It's like Photoshop. Is, is, is this the same Photoshop as the other one, or it's just limited? It's limited because it doesn't have all of the capabilities of Photoshop, but it's but it's what? The basics. It's the basics. Um, you know, you can save graphics, edit them, add text, crop. So that you've got some filters. Yeah, it's like classic Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. So I can do like cool stuff like kaleidoscope. Look at that. I just made a cool background for my website. I just drew one picture and then I made a kaleidoscope and there it is. Even the keyboard shortcuts are similar to Photoshop. So if you remember B for brush, you can go there. Uh, Z for zoom and, and so forth. You've got control Z just like keyboard shortcut. And then uh, when you're done working on it, what you can do, file, save. And that gives you several places to save it. You can either save it to your computer, save it directly to Facebook, to Flickr, Picasa. You can save it as a JPEG, and it'll tell you which version you might want to use. So JPEG for most photos, ping for the best quality, TIFF, and then their own special format, PXD. If you're used to Photoshop, you know about PSD files, which saves all the metadata, like layers and all that cool stuff. This creates PXD files, which you cannot open in regular Photoshop, unfortunately. But you can always open it again in Pixlr, and it still has all your layers and all that cool stuff. So it's limited. You know, obviously, Photoshop is a few hundred dollars if you get it legitimately. And here, this is free, it doesn't do everything, but I've, I've, I, fire it, I fire it up when I'm at someone's computer that doesn't have Photoshop and I need to make some edits. Because it's powerful, it's web-based, and it's available on any computer, Mac, Windows, doesn't matter, and it's free. So I drew something here, and I'm going to save it to the desktop. And there it is. I created something on the web and I and I um, then can open it on my computer no problem right there
And obviously I can also file open, and I can open those sample pictures. And there we go, I opened a picture from the desktop and then I can work on it. I can do some of these filters or whatever and, you know, edit my <laughs> pictures. And so I can edit that and then save it again. And I've got history, which is of course very cool. And layers and text. It doesn't have everything, but it has a lot very useful things. So little by little, the first uh, third or so of the classes, we're going to learn, we're going to be able to get around WordPress create content on, on WordPress, know where the different screens of WordPress are at, uh, and then we're going to focus more on, okay, we kind of know the tool, let's create a real website, and then after that we'll do social media, more SEO, it's, just a, it's a building process. So two hours at a time or so, that's what we'll be doing. These videos are going to be up on YouTube, and I'm going to send out the link so that you can play the video again if you'd like. No homework today, but you should re you should look again at the at the videos. Any questions?